My name is Sister Antoine Marie Borrier, and I welcome you all in Down Memory Lane. I left Paris in 1969 to go teach one year at Marymount High School. That's 60 years ago plus. I'm the only original nun left at Marymount right now. I grew up in Europe and life was not easy. My family and I lived through some of the worst conflicts of the 20th century. When I was extremely young, my mother woke me up in the middle of the night and told me to get up. The Spanish Revolution had begun and we had to go to France to escape it. We moved to France, but soon after that, World War II started and my family had to return to Spain. Although I was French, I was born in Spain. I grew up with one foot on either side of the Pyrenees, depending on where the conflicts were. I spoke three languages, French, Spanish, and Catalan by the time I was five years old. But to learn English, I attended a junior college in Barcelona, run by the RSHM nuns. I was inspired to join the order by the American and Irish sisters who taught me. They sent me to Paris, where I earned a BA in science from the Sorbonne. After that, I taught secondary school in France until I got accepted at my assignment at Marymount. Mehman was established in 1968 by my order of the religious of the Secretary of Mary. It was run by 15 or 16 of us sisters. My one-year assignment was extended and eventually stretched into six decades. I joined the faculty, enrolled at UCLA, and earned a master's degrees and a doctorate in French literature. The college went through many evolutions over the years until it became Marymount California University in 2013. I saw many, many changes through the years. I continue to teach and serve on the University Board of Trustees for the past five presidents. Maybe six by now, who knows. In the 1970s, we would give 75% of our salaries back to the college. And in 2000, the order donated our convent to the college. At that time, I moved to the Villas, a gated housing community for students owned by Marymount on Palos Verdes Drive North. Over the years, I also work as a translator for the RSHM order. Across the Atlantic Ocean, at least, who knows, 70 times or more, for their international meetings, traveling all over Europe. Although I don't travel much anymore, I continue to teach languages classes at Marriott. Language is my forte. The kids are still the same. The only thing is that now they could be my great grandkids. 50 years later, I'm preparing for Mission Week, an annual event that takes place during the last week of March to celebrate Marymount's heritage. I wanted to do something we've never done before. I've been here at this Marymount 50 years this year, and I know how things were and how they are now. It's a trip down memory lane. I'm here to share with you all the different places on the campus and share with you the little stories and explain what they used to be there and what you're seeing now. We first take a look at the center of our Marymount Chapel in Rancho Palos Verdes, the window of Eastern Dawn, eight by 17 foot of stained facet windows, forms a background for the hand-carved image of the crucified Savior. The quiet peace of the sacred face marked by suffering is heightened by the soft yet glowing tones 
of the window. Myriad color fuse and convey unified tone and atmosphere of thoughtful peace and promise. Dominated the lower section, deep green, rich bronze, soft amber clouds suggest an earthy note and merge to a point symbolizing the hill of Calvary. As the line move and converge upward, they establish a feeling of death and movement into the distance. Blues, purples, embers in varied shade gather intensity and strength as they reach the focal point behind the cross beam of the crucifix. Here the lavender clouds give place to golden aureoles, suggesting a more ethereal quality and presaging the glory and peace of Eastern Dawn. Strikingly, as lovely as the window is, its quiet beauty never detracts from the main interest of the center, the crucified. It serves rather to complement in a subtle manner the pathos and hidden radiance of a crucified God. Conceived with the idea of aiding the prayerful soul in its reflection on eternal truth, the window inspires a meditative spiritual mood. Sister Françoise O'Hare and RSE Chem helped with the design of this beautiful window. Rick Hamlet, editor of Guidepost, says, one reason stained glass is such a popular feature in churches is that it offers a perfect metaphor for how God works through us. Most art is best appreciated when the light shines on it, bringing out the texture and color of the medium. With stained glass, the light going through the window allows us to see the artwork in all its glory. Those pieces of colored glass are transformed, pierced by sunlight, the same way God lights us up. Almighty God, as we look at this beautiful stained glass window and Jesus on the cross, the Easter dawn, we rejoice and give you thanks as we remember your son's resurrection and ascension into heaven, as he first passed through death into life. Dear Lord, in your mercy and love, Father, remember all those who have spent some time praying, adoring you, or just spending a little time with you, and also those who, along the years, have received your sacraments, baptism, reconciliation, First Communion, Confirmation, and Holy Matrimony in this beautiful chapel of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart of Mary. Amen. St. Gertrude the Great, a statue in our chapel. Now, we go to the St. Gertrude. She is the only female saint to be called the Great. Gertrude was born in Germany on the Feast of the Epiphany in 1256, two centers before Luther. However, she lived during the same time as many of the great saints, including St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Francis of Assisi, and St. Dominic. St. Gertrude's life was the mystic life of the cloister, a Benedictine nun. She meditated on the passion of Christ, which many times brought a flood of tears to her eyes. She did many penances and our Lord appeared to her many times. She had a tender love for the Blessed Virgin and was very devoted to the suffering souls in purgatory. She died in 1334. Pope Benedict XVI gave her the title The Great to acknowledge the depth of her writing and theological insights. Her name was given to the students' resident building on the campus, today owned by the Salvation Army, since we moved here at the Rancho Palos Verdes, where we are, in 1975. We have in our chapel the statue of St. Gertrude the Great, who used to preside in the student lounge. She also was the patron saint of Mother Gertrude, an RSHM, 
another pioneer of the Merriman expansion in the West. St. Gertrude the Great, pray for us. O God, who prepared a delightful dwelling for yourself in the heart of the Virgin St. Gertrude, graciously bring light through her intercession to the darkness of our hearts that we may joyfully experience your present and at work within us. At this time, we want to remember and pray for Mother Gertrude, who inspired many and devoted her life to the education of the young. Amen. Mother Gertrude Cain, a Nerissi gem, one of the first pioneers of the West. <clears throat> In 1920, as a young woman, Mother Gertrude entered the novitiate in Terrytown, and in 1920, she pronounced her first vow as an RSHM. Since Mother Gertrude had completed credentials for the teaching profession before her dedicated life began, she was chosen as a member of the pioneer community for the West. She began her apostolic career in Southern California in September 1923. In obedience to her superiors, Mother Gertrude's apostolate to reform the home and the world has borne a fruitful harvest, a little plant where always kind and gentle. As teacher, principal, superior, president of Merriman College, and provincial superior of the Western province, she always gave to administrative duties the same selfless dedication and inspirational guidance that she showed as a youthful pioneer to Catholic education in South California. But now, Reverend Mother Gertrude was called to the Generalate in Rome to represent the Western American province of the religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary. All efforts and prayers were geared toward the success of the upcoming Heresy Gem General Chapter. The Divine Servant. Next we go to this beautiful sculpture in the cafe, The Divine Servant, designed and produced by Max Greener. It is based on St. John 13, 1 to 12, when at the Last Supper, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples, an example of love, humility, and servanthood. In preparing for his art piece, Max had his feet washed in order to better understand Christ's example. He realized that it was far harder to have one's feet washed than to wash the feet of another. If we closely look at Peter, he appears confused and uncomfortable while Jesus is totally in control and at ease. Stephanie Hart, assistant to President McFadden, saw that this sculpture would be the perfect tribute to Sister Mercedes Gutierrez, RSHM. Why? Because for over 20 years, Sister served and fed our students in the snack bar and later in the cafe. She always treated her customers with kindness, simplicity, and graciousness, showing through her actions and words that her life was to follow Christ's example the best way she knew. Lord and Father of all, we thank you for your great love and mercy towards us, your servants. Help us all to follow in the example set by your Son, the Divine Servant, in serving both you and our neighbor. We remember Sister Mercedes Gutierrez, who following your example, gave herself totally to the service of feeding our students in the cafe from 1975 to 1997. Please, good Father, shower us with your blessings so that we may also be a blessing to all those whom we come in contact with. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The Art Building, the Old Preschool. Now, if we go to the Art Building, Merriman College Preschool 
was the vision of Tom Wood, our former president. Dr. Wood's background included elementary teaching and administration, and his love for the education of young children never left him. Forming an effective teaching and learning environment and the study of pedagogy were among his passions. His vision was to develop a college lab preschool here at Marymount College that would be a model of excellence in teaching young children and in training future teachers. His goal was to serve children and their families, college students and college employees. On July 1st, 1976, Virginia Wade, who is still with us, was hard to bring his vision to life. Mehman College Preschool opened in September 1976, just two months later with an enrollment of 19 children. By September 1978, the school was fully enrolled and waiting lists were established. The program was designed around the appropriate practices for the education of young children. Over the years, Mehman College Preschool served well over 1,500 families, primarily from the local communities of Palos Verdes and San Pedro. It serves as a lab school for the Los Angeles Harbor College and the San Pedro Harbor Occupational Program for Teachers Training. Its reputation was one of service, education to the college, and a high quality setting for students interested in practical applications of theoretical knowledge. The program was blessed with an outstanding and highly trained professional faculty. One of the RSA gems is the perpetual language, help establish the school and taught for the first five years. The role of the preschool was also to serve the college staff and faculty. Dozens of employees' children attended the preschool. A key goal of the program was to serve and train as many as 40 college students each semester as aides in the preschool. They were enrolled in early childhood education classes that were then an important part of the curriculum. Students in various classes used the preschool for observation assignments. Many of the former preschoolers have enrolled and graduated from Merriman College and MCU. We have even had employees who were former preschoolers. The preschoolers enjoy many activities on the college campus. Some of these included trick-or-treating the college offices every Halloween. Dr. Wood read out loud to the children on a regular basis. An annual Christmas program was held with all the children participating. In the early years, a swim program was provided during the summer session. Dr. Wood was one of the swim instructors, along with Jim Reeve and other college faculty. The children went to library for story time. Marymount College Preschool served our community for 34 years with pride, excellence, and joy. While Virginia Wade led the school for 25 years, she retired from the director position in 2001. The school was retired in 2010 due to changes in strategic direction of MCU. It leaves a legacy of providing hundreds of children with a preschool program that met the highest standards of early childhood education. Lord God, we give you thanks for your many blessings you have bestowed on all of us. We give thanks for all those who have passed through this preschool and we ask you to continue to bless and protect these beloved children of yours their families virginia wade sister perpetua and the numerous student helpers who gave their loving service there for 25 years may all continue to grow closer to you O divine love we ask this through christ our lord Amen. Now if we go to the circle, we see the statue of the Blessed Mother. 
everyone who comes to MCU is welcomed by the Sacred Heart of Mary statue in the center of the circle. What people might not know is that this statue today is the third of its kind. Do you want to know what happened? Okay. On March 27, 1953, Mrs. Albert Dubin donated the first statue of our Blessed Mother in memory of her husband. Monsignor Scott from Mary Star of the Sea presided the ceremony while all joined in the recitation of the rosary. The statue stood there until a car coming down Crest forgot to turn on PV East or forgot to brake and drove right into the Blessed Mother, who luckily stopped that car from going all the way into the chapel. Needless to say that only crumbs of plaster were left of our beautiful Sacred Heart of Mary statue, while the driver came out unhurt and bewildered. Following this sad incident, we had an identical second statue installed. All was well for a long while until a couple of nights before our May graduation. Two of the graduating class thought it would be a lot of fun to play some pranks as a departed farewell. So between 1 and 2 a.m., they went to remove the statue. As they were working on it, the statue crumbled and out of the darkness of the night appeared the guard on duty. It not ended sadly for the statue, but also for the culprits caught red-handed. Hopefully, they learned that you cannot play tricks involving the Blessed Mother. It certainly did not pay off for those two, since they were not allowed to participate to the graduation ceremony. Then, of course, came statue number three, right here, in front of us, still whole and unharmed. Blessed Mother, please pray for us, protect us, and take us to your Son. Almost Blessed Mother, heart of love, heart of mercy, ever listening, caring, consoling, hear our prayer. From 1951, you have stood here, in the middle of Loretta Circle, protecting, blessing, and bringing closer to your Son Everyone who drove, walked, had a fair or gathering near you. As your children, we implore your help for each one of us, all of us, Holy Mother, to bear our burdens in this life until we may share eternal life and peace with God forever. Amen. If we go to the administration building, we find Father Gayak right on the wall on the left of the entrance door to the building. He is memorialized on this campus by the bar re relief on the outside wall of the administration building. It reminds us that Father Gayak, 1802-1890, founded the religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary. In 1849, in Béziers, France, who in turn established the first Marymount in Territon, New York in 1907, a very important fact of our past history. Throughout most of the 19th century, Father Gaia endeavored to recognize the dignity and potential beauty of each individual person as he remained intimately connected to the most needy and marginalized of society. His spirit was one of deep faith and zeal. Education was very dear to his heart. Besides France, foundations were established in Ireland, Portugal, England, and the United States of America. To go back to the statue, when in 1975, Nehemiah Palos Verdes College moved from what is today the Salvation Army across the Terranea to our Orsonshad campus, Father Gaia came by helicopter not inside the cabin, no, but dangling down in the air until it was safely brought down very carefully. It was quite a sight, let me tell you. 
Sister Genevieve Underwood, RLC Gem, is responsible for this statue. Her art extended also in making stained glass windows. Let me tell you about Sister Genevieve. Years back, when her brother-in-law was the mayor of Avalon in Catalina Island, he asked her to use her artistic gifts right there in the island. Upon his request, Sister Genevieve spent some months in Avalon and gave the Catholic Church there the beautiful glass windows you can still see today. God, Father of infinite love, we praise you. Help us to assume our commitment of fidelity to the mission of Christ in the Church of today as it leads the way in defense of the oppressed. Make us sensitive to the needs of your people. Mark us with the fidelity of our founder, Father Jean Gaillac. May our presence be a constant revelation of love and joy as was Mary's woman of faith and hope. Make us grow, Lord, in true zeal, capable of transforming the world. May our hearts discover you in the scriptures, in the breaking of the bread, and in the service of others. Strengthen and unite us in love to be a testimony to the world that you are Father and that we are brothers and sisters in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Trinity sculpture also refer as to the seat of mercy adorns the auditorium wall. It portrays the father holding the dead body of his son, their faces joined by the Holy Spirit represented under the form of a dove. Paul Conrad, mostly known as a controversial and political cartoonist for the LA Times, became interested in culture during the mid-1970s. He worked on drawing, depicting the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Pleased with what he accomplished, he decided to replicate his drawing and use steel to create it. At the time, knowing nothing about welded sculpture, he spent months in the library researching how to proceed. Having finally learned how to bring his project to life, Conrad, a good friend of President Tom Wood, and a resident of Rancho Palos Verdes, presented to Merriman College the Trinity, a 600-pound culture made of steel. In order to make it look like copper, he gave it a verde patina. It looked inspiring and grandiose. But the weather started eroding the steel. What had stood so beautifully there became totally rusted. So Father Mark Villano, the NCU chaplain at the Sculpture Restore in 2012. Father, you sent your word to bring us truth and your spirit to make us holy. Through them, we come to know the mystery of your life. Help us to worship you, one God in three persons, by proclaiming and living our faith in you. We ask you this, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, true and living, forever and ever. Dear Lord, in this auditorium, we have enjoyed many plays, parties, celebrations. We have had meetings and student gatherings to equip them with tools to succeed. Bless the artist and cartoonist, Conrad, who made this beautiful work in front of us. Bless also everyone whoever enter there to work, study, or have a good time. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Auditorium. When the Auditorium was built, it was named after Sister Françoise O'Hare a very instrumental heresy gem who worked very hard in the foundation and transition of our Merriman schools in California, mainly on this campus. 
One of our recent NCU presidents had the name taken down and replaced by the comments. It just happened. No one was asked, consulted, or had anything to say. Well, that was too bad. The Seat of Wisdom, the Sedes Sapientia. This beautiful mosaic, a six by nine foot artwork of Our Lady of Wisdom, is the perfect choice to have installed the Blessed Mother in this place of honor in the center of our educational establishment, Cecilia Hall. Knowledge brings wisdom to those who come to learn. We owe it to a 1962 senior art student, Claudia Barrett, who designed and presented her work as a senior art project. It was considered so meaningful, so well thought and beautifully done, that they decided to make it into this colorful wall mosaic. When this building, Cecilia, was under construction, the following problem arose, which was quickly solved by the architect Russell Collins. One usual problem of such a large building with the long corridor was solved by the placement of a puits de lumière or rotundant near the center of the building. This will allow not only daylight from above, but also will serve as the focal point from both the entrances lobby and the main corridors. Personal note here to those of you who are not familiar with French, a puits de lumière is a well of light, a source of light. Everyone has walked by the rotunda numbers and numbers of times and has taken for granted the beautiful and exquisite brightness of the heart of Cecilia Hall. Let us take a minute to enjoy this special place, the seat of wisdom, and reflect in our hearts what it must have meant to the generations of students and educators who came and went for decades and what does it mean today to the MCU family? Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. O oh Mary, Mother of God, Seat of Wisdom, every time we walk by this beautiful mosaic work, touch our hearts so that we might get closer to your Son, Jesus, every day. Therefore, Our Lady, all-embracing refuge, we solemnly recall your sweet protection and forever beg Christ for his mercy. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Castlefield and we're talking about Andrew Castle. Who was Andrew Castle? Well, besides being the official photographer of the Dodgers and a photography instructor at Marymount Palos Verdes College, Castle actually happened to be the owner of both a small camera shop and a big dream. His dream was to improve the struggling commercial center of Eco Park along Sunset Boulevard, maybe even transform it into a tourist attraction. With Dodger Stadium just a 10-minute walk up the hill, what better way to do that, he thought, than to shine some reflected glory of sport heroes down on the relatively unglamorous street of the shoe store, banks, bakeries, and restaurants. So, at Castle's urging, the city of Los Angeles in 1974 declared the 10 blocks of Sunset Boulevard between Elysian Park Boulevard and Alvarado Street to be the avenue of the athletes, allowing sidewalks to be dotted with tablets bearing the names of super tart jobs. Castle himself hardly fit that image. At the time, he was a short, slow-moving, elderly gentleman. Castle, who also worked as a photographer for the Dodger, 
got the team and other local merchants to back the project financially. The first plaques were laid in concrete in 1976, during what was supposed to be an annual ceremony. Andy fought with the city council. He fought with everybody to get this going, recalled Leonard Loom, owner of the Pioneer supermarket chain and chairman of the Avenue of the Athletes. It was not until 1980 that the Eco Park Chamber of Commerce was able to revive the project, which even its biggest booster concede has yet to fulfill Castle dreams. Castle once owned a second camera shop in Hollywood, where he noticed the appeal of the stars in the sidewalk. The Avenue of the Athlete has 32 plaques now, but has never become a strong competitor to the much higher show business walk of fame on Hollywood Boulevard. While teaching at MBVC, Mount Palos Verdes College, Castle hired one of his graduating photography students and had him work at his small shop in LA. He so much trusted this young man that upon his decease, he left his business to him. When Andy Castle passed in 1978, Maymont wanted to remember him in a very special way. The college soccer field became Castle Field. Not only did the Merriman student play, but a good number of the little leaguers from the nearby towns such as St. Peter, Lomita, Torrance, and of course, PV, had their weekend games on our campus. Amazingly, the neighbors never complained about the screaming and noise born of all the excitement there. For 30 years, the field was ours, but also always open to the neighbor's youth. Dr. Brophy solved the complaints about the parking problem in the street near the college. This is how Castlefield became a new parking lot. The breaking of the ground was a moving ceremony, mostly for all those who missed the lovely field and the soccer games. Before becoming a parking lot, dear Lord, you saw many children as young as five years old, up to college students, playing soccer or baseball nearly every weekend. Thank you, Lord, for the chance to compete and to use of our talents through sports. Remind us that we are called to give our best and to finish the race while caring for others along the way. We pray for those who have played on these fields and that have represented this college or different nearby town leagues with pride. We ask that all our athletes, past, present, and those to come, compete while doing everything for your greater glory. Amen. For a while, Merriman stood alone. Not one house had been built around it. Some of our first students came horse riding. Roads were just plain dirt. What a difference today. Jesus Sanchez helped me with that memory lane. He was one of the seminarians who attended MCU since the fall 2019. He came from a Camino College where he had started to study for a Bachelor of Art in Psychology. Jesus finished his last semester at MCU and graduated early May 2021. He was accepted at St. John Seminary in July 2021 to continue his priesthood formation. At MCU, Jesus excelled academically. I have to say that he never gave me worry about passing a class. 
Success seemed to come easy to him. God had showered him with many gifts. He was involved in campus ministry and helped prepare the Christmas prayer service in 2019. Giving strong ideas and helping in making programs, researching special readings, printing, posting, and always ready to fill in where there was a need. Very early 2020, before the COVID-19 broke loose, he offered his skill and time to help me prepare for Mission Week. The plan was to have a walking pilgrimage through some of the campus key location and point out what used to be versus what it is now. Many MCU employees who joined us the last few years do not know enough of our history. We decided to call this walking pilgrimage down memory lane. I sent Jesus pictures and texts. He put it all together for me. It is an incredible job, a very successful one. So Jesus, I pray for you and thank you for your graciousness, your help, your computer skills, your time and patience. I could not have done it without you. God bless you and keep you faithful to the Lord's call.